More than 2 million Canadians are living with multiple sclerosis, and a new discovery could offer hope of a cure. A study led by Harvard researchers concluded that those infected with Epstein-Barr are about 32 times more likely to develop MS as those who have not contracted the EBV infection. So with more on this, we're joined by Dr. Mark Horwitz, Professor of Microbiology and Immunology at the University of British Columbia. Thank you for waking up early for us. Good morning. Good morning. About 90% of us will be infected with Epstein-Barr virus during our lifetime. It is a member of the herpes virus family, one of the most common human viruses in the developed world. And when we look at MS, Canada has one of the highest rates in the world, about one in 400. So while Epstein-Barr and MS don't have a direct correlation, what does this new study show? Well, th this study shows that there is a direct correlation now between EBV and MS, that everyone, nearly everyone, um, uh, probably not over 99.9% .9 of MS patients have been infected with EBV in their lifetime prior to developing MS. Um, the previous studies have all uh, dealt with patients which have MS and look at their EBV, because EBV was a virus of interest. They have been infected and we had those numbers, but this study looked at 10 million people longitudinally over time and found over 800 of them, I think 950 or something, that got MS. And of those, um, all of them but maybe one had uh, EBV infection with roughly about three years before getting the disease. So the cor correlation here is stronger than any other correlation with almost any other disease, even smoking and lung cancer. What is exciting to you about this discovery? Well, this finally says that uh, we've believed for a while that EBV is important and trying to, our lab has been working on trying to figure out the mechanism how EBV does it. But what this does is actually say that EBV is immediately involved. And even though I, I said EBV does it, we don't know if EBV does it or just sets the table for something else. Mm -hmm. But we do know that if you don't have EBV, the likelihood of getting disease is, is remote. A trial by California-based Atara Biotherapeutics used T-cells from patients who had recovered from EBV or Epstein-Barr virus and used them to treat MS. And of the 24 patients involved, 20 saw their condition improve or stabilize after a year. So while this is a very small sample size, uh, does the established link between EBV and MS offer hope for a cure, a cure a little later? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it, it's, it means that, one, we could prevent disease by... Um, keeping people from getting EBV infected. Or um, likely um, a vaccine would work absolutely in this case. Um, a, a EBV vaccine would also uh, reduce the presence of other diseases that it's associated with, including cancer and arthritis and lupus. So um, the link here to EBV as, a, as an important virus and all those diseases is important. In terms of a cure for those that have it, this is also great news because it means that if we could get rid of the EBV in their body, we, we have a good chance of reducing their disease. And one way is what the Atara um, uh, biological. There are some other uh, possibilities as well. It is just incredible news, a discovery like this that not only could lead to a cure, but also prevention, which is fascinating. Now, this, the Harvard study didn't theorize why the two might be related, MS and EBV, but do we have an idea of how EBV could lead someone to develop or how it could trigger MS? Yeah, so, so there's a couple papers that came out in the last three months um, giving a, a couple theories or hypotheses, and they showed data to, to uh, promote those. Um, our lab's been working on a, a, a different theory, but one that is in line with theirs as well. So the, the idea is that the virus um, infects us, but is going to stay with us for the rest of our lives, like uh, chicken pox. Mm -hmm. And to do that, the immune system has to recognize that it's there. And in, during the, any type of reactivation, uh, which could happen over stress or another viral infection or anything, um, the vi immune system has to put the virus down. So that means there's a very strong um, antiviral immune system present and aware, kind of like a cat looking at a mouse hole. And what happens um, is that something that just being that strong with an antiviral response, whatever comes next might give um, target a disease. And in the case of MS, likely um, it's targeting the central nervous system and the oligodendrocytes that make myelin. When I listen to you, it sounds like we are closer than we've ever been before. It must be so incredibly exciting to do this kind of work. 
it's, it's really exciting for us because we do a lot of modeling of the mechanism. And for us, justification of that modeling has to come from justification that the virus is strongly involved. And so it's really exciting for us. Um, and our work has been expanding into uh, really looking at human um, immune systems and, and how the virus um, intimately changes that in, in, a, in a neuro uh, targeted way. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. I have to say, from a scientific point of view, <laughs> it's fun. And because we might have a, a, a cure or, or prevention. I mean, a prevention's obvious, but yeah. a cure, that's what, what really is so important here. And, and there's a lot of tools and tricks that we could learn from other diseases like cancer and HIV, where they've been able to remove um, specific cells and viruses. And so those could really help here. Dr. Horwitz, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this really exciting news with us. Oh, absolutely. Anytime. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.